Hey streamers, it's Matt Clark and I've got a new review for you. Netflix has just released Chef's Table, which is what they're calling a docu-series. And what Chef's Table is, is six episodes and each episode follows a different world-renowned chef. Uh, we have two from America, one from New York City, one from Los Angeles, and then four from different corners of the globe. You can watch them in any order, it doesn't follow any linear path, uh, but the first one listed is Chef Massimo Batura, who owns and operates the Osteria Francescana in Modena, Italy. And I want to take this time right now to apologize for butchering the Italian language. There's probably a few more words that I'm going to struggle with later on. Just know that's not my intention and uh, kind of work with me here for a second. Now, Chef Massimo, very highly regarded, obviously. Uh, there's a scene in his episode where he is visiting the farmer's market uh, to collect ingredients and, and the people that work at the farmer's market are calling him maestro. Uh, a food critic is interviewed in his episode and, and she refers to him as an icon of Italy. So this is definitely, we're definitely dealing with chefs here who are at the top of their game. In fact, um, the restaurant Osteria, which he owns and, and works out of, um, Osteria is listed as the third best restaurant in the entire world. And um, you know, after seeing the dishes that he creates, I, I fell in love. I mean, he, he creates some beautiful, beautiful dishes. And, and the whole show is shot extremely beautiful and artistic. We kind of follow his journey from childhood to now as it relates to his love of food. So we have what really got him started in the kitchen underneath the table as his grandmother was preparing food and his first successful restaurant and then he decides to move away from Modena and move to New York City to gain some different perspectives of food and culture and that's where he meets his wife Laura while working at a cafe in New York City and then they end up moving back to Modena and opening up the Osteria. Now they weren't at first welcomed or the chef's, the chef's dishes were not welcomed in Modena because what he is is a food uh, provocateur, as what I would call it. He takes classic Italian dishes and just flips them on their head and, to create some really creative stuff, but this was met with a lot of opposition at first and, and Italian food critics would just tear into him and, and, and people who went to the restaurant couldn't understand why he was doing this to their classic dishes that were handed down from the generations. There's a strong emphasis put on um, Italian kitchen, the cucina, and, and, and grandmother's recipes and all these things and Chef Massimo respects those but wants to his his patrons of his restaurant to see things in a different way so he comes up with some really really fantastic dishes that I'm gonna show you right now because I've, I've got to show these to you and take a look at this. this is absolutely gorgeous this this gold dish that we have here and and this one I mean this is food I'll let you watch the episode to see what exactly this is but oh my god and this one is called the five ages of Parmigiano Reggiano and I don't know if you can see, but each section of it is a different way to prepare Parmesan cheese. You can see the crispy wafer portion, and then maybe you can see the frothy section there. It's just absolutely insane. You can tell that he is inspired by art. And that is, his wife is responsible for introducing him to art. When they met in New York City, he was very single-minded of what he was brought up in Italy and she exposed him to different cultures and different styles of art and that is highly influential on him it's obvious and so I I think this is a great series you, you should definitely check it out in his episode we get to interview uh, Chef Massimo and his wife a sous chef at the Osteria restaurant and a food critic and you get a really strong sense of what drives Chef Massimo you should check it out. Next time you have an hour on Netflix, check out the Massimo Bottura episode of Chef's Table. I think you will be hooked. Maybe don't do it on an empty stomach. I don't know, at your own risk. So thank you so much for watching this review of Chef's Table, and I will see you next time for another episode of Stream On.